uh, we've known him for a lot, a lot of years. Uh, Monrovia is sort of a Cadillac dealer of, of or Lexus anymore, whoever the high-end car is. There's so many of them, of, of plants. So you've got a lot of farms all over. We're pulling from the Visalia, Portland, Oregon, or, or Salem, wherever that is, uh, uh, farms. They ship in probably every week we get plants fresh from them. So because the quality is so consistent, uh, it's not, they don't deal in contractor grade stuff, they deal in finished, nice. There's different, definitely different grades of plants. There's just transplanted. We just need to meet the bid because you, you want the lowest price in your backyard, get that one. He's not that. He's got a, he finishes it longer, gives an extra prune, so it fills out, so it blooms better. That's a uh, Monrovia <laughs> nursery that do any remote justice. You can, you can polish that however you want. Take it wherever you want. Jim Root, thank you. Give it up for him. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, you can ask me to talk about uh, something I've put in the season to talk about. So I'm going to talk about Circus, red bugs. Um, just a quick, for the plant nerds, uh, it's kind of fun to know where their botanical names come from. Circus actually comes from the Greek Kirkus. Kirkus in the Greek means weaver's shuttle. So this is the Oklahoma red bud, and the variety name is Oklahoma, hence it's actually was a sport found off of a regular Canadian uh, red bud in Oklahoma. So they named it the variety Oklahoma. This is probably one of the more popular ones. Unlike the regular eastern red bud that gets 30, 40 feet tall, this one here only gets about 15 feet tall. So it's a perfect tree for our small gardens or small homes we have now. As you can see, the flowers, the blooms on it are just spectacular with the blooms. You'll see them here, the landscapes blooming usually in April. It's when we'll start blooming. These kind of came in from California, so they're a little bit of head. So, but this is a really nice one here. Um, another one is Avondale. This is a Chinese red bud, uh, native to the uh, highlands of uh, central China. This variety, though, called Avondale, was developed in New Zealand. Yeah. It has larger flowers, generally, than most of the other red buds. This is a really good heat, heat tolerant one, too. So you got a hot area. I sell this one in the desert a lot, actually, down into Tucson, even. It does pretty well down there. So this is a really good one for if you have a really hot area. All of them, though, take quite a bit of heat. They take a lot of cold. They're all good for our area. And pretty drought tolerant ones are established, which is nice. So, and when they're done blooming, it's an attractive plant, for the attractive tree. The foliage is very pretty on them. So that's Avondale, uh, Oklahoma. Almost burgundy, the new growth when it comes out. This has a weeping habit to it. And it only gets about five to six feet tall, maybe four to five feet wide as well. So uh, I had a pot there because I think it'd actually be a really pretty plant to put, put the pot as well. This is the Mexican red bud, native to northern Mexico, parts of Texas. So this is the one that's actually closest to us as far as native wise. It has smaller leaves to it, maybe about so big around, a couple inch and a half or so, kind of wavy. Very, it's one of the prettier foliages, I think, of the red buds. Light pink, smaller flowers, but very, very heat uh, tolerant. This one works well. I sell it down into uh, Phoenix and uh, Tucson as well. How tall is that one? Yeah. This one here would get about 15 feet tall here. No, as it gets taller, as it gets taller, you trim the whole way to take off? Will it get taller if you do yeah. that? No, I mean, can as, as it gets yeah. taller, you, you can, can yes. trim the whole way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if you want it to have more of a head to it, you can do that, yeah. It actually kind of grows somewhat as a, in the wild, a little bit more of a multi-shrub, multi-stem little tree. Uh, but this is very, very good for really hot areas. You've got a hot southern wall, which is a lot of reflective heat or something. This is a good one. The only thing I would caution is if you live in Prescott Valley, where you have more clay soils, probably not the best. It likes really good drainage. But it loves our granite soils up here in Prescott, especially because they're very well drained. 
Will the weeping one do okay in Prescott Valley? Yeah, they're a little bit more suited to the soils there than the Mexican is. This one here is probably one of the more familiar ones. It's called Forest Pansy. It has, it gets about 20 feet tall and has very maroon foliage to it, which is what it's really known for is the maroon foliage. Plus it has the, uh, the pink flowers. The question was, he uh, got one that's called a Western Red Bud. Um, Circus occidentalis, yeah, that's the that's the native one to uh, parts of California, uh, Las Vegas area. It grows up to, uh, it's okay for our location here. We're gonna take our cold here. We're about the maximum cold for it here. Uh, yeah, it's called the Western Red Bud. It's uh, native to uh, to the southwest, up to about 5,000 feet, sometimes a little higher, and it kind of grows as a bush form. But yeah, it's a really it's a good one for here. Any other questions? How tall does the Avondale one get? The question was, how tall does the Avondale one get? The Avondale is a little bit smaller. It's probably going to be a maximum of 12, uh, 12 15 feet max. So it's going to be a little bit shorter than the uh, Oklahoma. And then do these, um, the leaves are green through the, the summer for most of them? What's after that? they After they flower, uh -huh. then do the... The leaf, the flowers go away, and then you just have the leaves. Right. Yes. And then in the fall. Um, and in the fall, they go deciduous. The okay. looser leaves. They'll have a, some type of little bit of fall color, using kind of a yellowish, uh, yellow fall color to them, and they'll drop the leaves. And that's why they're so well suited for us here, is because they do lose their leaves. They take our cold, no matter what, how much cold we have, they'll take it. But at the same time, they take our summer heat as well. So it's a, they're great plants. Like I say, you'll start seeing them blooming uh, everywhere, usually starting in April. So. Thank you. So you shouldn't plant an eastern red bud, right? What's that? You should not plant an eastern red bud here? No, these are variations. Most of all, these are variations of eastern red bud. Oh, they, they are. are. They are sports or hybridized off of eastern red buds, okay. yeah. You won't really find a straight eastern red bud. Circus canadensis. You probably wouldn't would never find one in the tray. They're just they're big trees. They get 50 feet tall, and they alone aren't the best for here. But the newer varieties that have been out in the last few decades are they're, they're very well suited for here. Jim, do you have a favorite red bud? Your personal favorite red bud? Really? Why? I I like the larger flower on it. Okay. Just a little bit smaller plant, compact, uh, and very versatile. Every yard in Yavapai County should have a red bud. <laughs> They're just the perfect tree for your animals. Don't bother them. They bloom in the spring. They get the most beautiful heart-shaped leaf. Yeah. Let me just let me take the the uh, Latin stuff. Beautiful heart-shaped leaf. Come on. Beautiful. It's not it's not yellow. It's called aspen gold in the fall. It's got interesting bark. My favorite is this one. This is crazy interesting. If you've got a raised bed or a mound in that front parking area or a raised bed looking up to some sterile wall, you want to bring the eye forward so you're not focused to, you know, shaved out sidewall or, or your neighbor's cinder block or their trash. You want to bring the eye forward with this beautiful garden. It's called Oasis Garden. This is one that you would accent, put in the center, and show off. Uh, this is called Ruby Falls, weeping red bud, super crazy unusual. Only Monrovia grows it that I know of. You're only going to find it here at Waters Garden Center. Only at Waters. Really, you're only going to find it because we're the only ones crazy enough to carry these very unusual specimens. This is a specimen. It's created. It's got a graph down here, so it's created to be this flowing. Uh, uh, you just see what it's doing. All these buds will be loaded up with flowers, very bright pink, then it just flows to the ground. And then from there, you put your other lower growing, flowering kind of stuff around that. This would be the centerpiece. And every gardener that comes over to your house would go, oh, what is that? Because it's so unusual. That's what a specimen is supposed to do. 
It draws you into the garden so that you can enjoy it more. I think art does that too. It's uh, garden art. It's not meant to be by itself. It's meant to draw you into a space. It's so pretty. You go, oh, what is that? And then you get surrounded going, oh, look at this. This is so pretty. It engages you. This is action art form, just living. It's what it's meant to be. That's my favorite. But we have Easter and all the others. This would be really cool with like the white Christmas lights on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, sure. Oh, this is really short. Go ahead. Yeah, it's shorter. It's maybe about five to six feet tall at the most, four feet wide or so. It has a real this weaving habit to it. It's, yeah. As they age, they get prettier and prettier as they age. That's right. The more mature they get, the yeah. more majestic they get, really. It's super unusual. We, we don't sell, this is not the number one seller. Number one seller is Eastern Red Bud. That's it, because everyone knows it. And all the East and Midwest folks, that's where they come in. I want an Eastern Red Bud. I go, here it is. I personally think the brighter, the newer varieties, the Oklahoma's, the Avondale's, they're the same tree, only with a brighter spring flower. That's, they're the same exact leaf. And then the forest pansy. Did you talk about that? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't here. I just checked out. Purple leaf. It's, it's oh. the same green leaf, only the leaf is purple. Yeah. Same bright red pink flower, but the leaf physically turns heart shaped purple. Very unusual. And it holds up. It takes our wind, it takes our sun, it takes our. With that, I got to pass it on. So thank okay. you very much, Jim. I appreciate that. Why don't you give that microphone to. Give it to Douglas. We'll yeah, talk one, flowers. One more Instead question. Having, what? Having moved here from Connecticut, so I'm not sure about this winter water. And I think I've just lost two plants because I didn't. So how much water do you I can cover that, yeah. yeah. So the question is, winter water, they're new from Connecticut. Does that get that right? That's the, the fighting, that's the green, obviously. So oh, no, go, go see Patty Day. What is that? This is North Dakota. Oh, North Dakota. We love you anyway. <laughs> Welcome to God's country. That's good. The question was water. How, how often should we water? Now, you'll notice that we were very, very dry for, for a long time. I mean, we basically November through through parts of February, it was dry, not a drop. Yet we went from monsoon, super amounts of wet, to bone dry. And that's how the mountains are. Uh, so to supplement the watering in midwinter is important because the plants still use water in winter. It doesn't freeze like in, in North Dakota. Does it, the ground does not freeze. I think we had a week's worth of frost line, about not even an inch thick. We picked right through it and kept planting. We never stopped planting this winter. The crews were out every week this winter. And so the plants are still using moisture, and that's how they form these buds. So if you don't water, you'll get what we call winter kill, or top burn, or frost burn. So the top of the plant will burn off. It sacrifices the top of the plant. The plants have antifreeze in them. As long as they're hydrated and that antifreeze can be pushed up and down the structure of the plant, they don't get damaged. As soon as they get dry, they start uh, taking the moisture they have and bringing it towards the heart of the plant. They want, to, they want to survive, so they'll sacrifice the top branches to keep the heart of the plant alive. And that's why you get that winter kill. This will become very pronounced. As we, as we come out of spring, you'll see your red tip photinia, notorious for, for being damaged. Uh, some of your bigger trees, bigger uh, cypress and cedars, they can be notorious for getting burned. Uh, so kind of watch that. So what we encourage in the winter, starting November is when we turn the systems off, about through March, uh, watering twice a month, deep soak, okay? Water it like it was hot in June. You know, in June, you're watering once a week, but in the winter, you're watering once, you know, twice a month, and you cut one of those off if we have a major storm. That's generally what, what we tell folks. Uh, if your system is turned off, you can manually turn it on just for the uh, nice afternoon, or you can water by hand. This is especially important for those things that are fairly newly planted. Their roots haven't grown out. They, they don't have as much buffer, as much space to, uh, to pull from. So they're more dependent on you. It takes about two years for a plant to grow from this bucket to the surrounding soil. It takes about that long to become mature in its landscape. So it's more tender or more dependent on you for those first couple of years. After that, the big specimens, are, they're so robust, I would say it's less important. 
Uh, so that, that's, did I answer that fully for you? So that's how, how to water. Wait a minute.